everybody grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ thank you for watching today my name is Keith I'm pastor here at Zion United Methodist Church in Myerstown Pennsylvania and welcome to today's Wednesday's word we are continuing our study of the book of first John and today we're going to look at obedience to God what does obedience to God uh, do for us, uh, particularly with our relationship uh, with the Lord. And so keep that in mind as I read this passage in 1 John chapter 3, verses 19 through 24. Think about um, obedience to God uh, and how that helps us in our relationship to the Lord. So it starts by saying this in verse 19, by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. And whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. Now keep in mind, I did read this passage last week. I'm going to focus on the last three verses of this passage. But John is helping these believers who um, are feeling attacked, like other people have told them, you know, you're not believing in the true faith. You don't have the true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so John is writing to them to encourage them, yes, you do have the true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have confidence in him. And John gives to them uh, a number of um, evidences that their faith is true, that their faith is real. And today we're going to look at the evidence of obedience, obedience to God. And so we start here in verse 22. And this has been a confusing passage to, my, to me and to many people that I've talked to. But I want to try to explain it in a little more detail. It says, in whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Now, this is, this is confusing because what it seems like it's saying here is that we can have a deal with God that basically if we do the right things, if we keep the commandments of God, that whatever we ask, we're going to receive from God. And it actually says something similar to this in John chapter 15 as well, as Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And it's, it's, it's confusing because um, my experience has not been that whatever I ask of God that he just gives to me. You know, that, that I just make a request and I get whatever I want from God. And that sort of seems like what he's saying here. If I were to ask you and put you on the spot, you are watching this video, and if I said to you, uh, what is one request that you have from God? What would be one thing you want from God right now? What would you say? And you may have to sit back and think about that. Like, I don't really know what I would pray for. But um, as, as we read this, it like I said, it seems like there's almost this deal that if I just do the right thing, if I just keep the commandments of God, God will just give me whatever I want. That is not at all what he's saying here. Um, and so I want to help to clear this up and unpack what, what I believe he's saying. Um, he says, whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And so, first of all, I want us to understand we are called to be obedient to God. He says we need to keep his commandments and do what pleases him. We have to understand, though, that, that being obedient to God, in other words, doing good things, good works, does not earn us salvation. There are no 
good works that we can do in order to earn salvation. The only way that we are saved is through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? There are, there are no works that we can do to earn salvation. But obedience to God, doing his commandments, is vitally important. He says in verse 23, this is the commandment that we, first of all, believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. So believing in the, in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, what's his name? Jesus Christ. Jesus means the Lord saves. Our salvation comes from Jesus Christ alone. Christ is, is a word that means the anointed one of God. He's the chosen one of God. He's the Savior, the Messiah of the world. And so we believe in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe that Lord, the Lord saves, that Jesus, the perfect Son of God, he suffered and died for you and for me. He died upon a cross and he was raised from the dead. And when he was hanging upon a cross, he took upon himself the curse of all of us because of our sin. He took upon himself the wrath of God that we deserve. And so when we trust in him, and we've repented of our sin, we are saved, okay? So believing, trusting in Jesus Christ, and then loving one another just as he has loved us. These are the two commandments that he gives to us, um, to love one another as he has commanded us. And that reminds me of what we see in John chapter 13, Jesus in verse 34, he says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are to love one another. And that love is agape love. That is a love that is self-sacrificial. It's a love of service, a love of putting others before yourself, being a blessing to others. Okay, so those are the two commandments that we see here. And he says, if you follow these commandments, whatever you ask, you will receive. Now, um, I think it's important to understand that he's, he's not saying that just whatever pops into your mind, whatever you want, you ask of God, you pray to God, and God's going to give you. That's not what he's saying. What he is saying is that as we are, as we are obeying God, as we are doing what he has called us to do, to believe in him and to love one another as he has loved us, something happens in our minds it, and that is that we begin to to have our wills aligned with God's will that there's a mentality change there's a shift that happens in our minds and the things that we are concerned with um, the things that we are preoccupied with um, are the things that consume us actually become the things of God as we're serving other people because um, as we're serving them we want to love them we want to see them come to faith in Christ we want to see them grow spiritually and so I'll, I'll give you a, um, an example of this kind of a worldly example and then a, 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 an example that um, would be uh, obedience to Christ but a worldly example would be think about if you got a new job you know, a job that you've never done before. And I'll just pick something kind of random, but imagine you get a job as a parts manager for a, you know, an auto body shop or a, a, a car maintenance and repair shop. And you come in and you've got to, you don't know anything about cars, but you come in and you've got to learn all of the different parts of the cars. You've got to learn how to um, order them and, and you've got to learn the business. And as you learn the business, you start to think differently. You start to, um, you know, as somebody comes in who needs help with their car to get their car repaired, you are thinking of ways to help that person, okay? And so your mentality is shifting, it's changing, so that, that you're thinking about car repair. You're thinking about how to help people to repair their cars. You're not thinking about um, other things, okay? And so... You, you start to have that change in mentality. The same thing happens when you devote your life to serving the Lord and serving other people. Let's say you begin a new type of ministry. Okay, so for instance, let's say you start to, um, to serve people who are in a nursing home and you go there five days a week 
and you're helping them, you're reading to them, you're visiting with them, you're praying with them, you're helping to feed them, or uh, you know, you're, you're spending time with them, showing God's love to them, your mentality begins to change and you begin to, um, you begin to want to see them grow in their faith. And as you are, are serving them and helping them you know, in, in your ministry, you're going to start to go to God on their behalf. And you're going to start to ask God for things that you want to see in their life. You're going to begin to pray um, that God would give you um, the strength and the, the heart to be able to be a blessing to others and to be able to serve them. You're going to begin to pray asking that God would open up doors so that you can have conversations with them about the Lord. You're going to be asking God um, to help them in the midst of their pain and suffering because people in that, you know, in nursing homes and in, in those rehabilitation centers, they're struggling. They've got physical problems. They've got, a, you know, maybe memory issues. They've got all kinds of issues they're dealing with. And as you're spending time with them, serving with them, serving them, you're going to have a mentality change and you're going to be praying for the things that they need, praying for the things that you need in order to serve them. And so as you're praying for those, and, and those are going to be, some of them are, you know, praying for healing and praying for uh, physical help, but a lot of the, the things you're going to be asking for from God are going to be spiritual things. They're going to be, you know, you're going to be asking for faith. You're going to be asking for, um, you know, uh, confidence in the Lord. Like I said, you're going to be asking for opportunities to have um, conversations about the Lord. And, and these are spiritual things. And listen, when you're serving God and you're asking him for these things, he's going to give them to you. He will give you the spiritual um, needs that you have. He will, he will provide for you um, for those spiritual needs. Now imagine for a second that you, you know, if, if you're in a lifestyle where all you're doing is sitting around playing video games or watching TV or just doing nothing, just wasting time, um, you're not in that mentality of serving others. You're not in the mentality of asking for those spiritual needs to bless other people. And you go to the Lord in prayer, what do you ask him for? And I think we've all been in a position where we've gone to the Lord in prayer and we don't really know what to say. We don't know what to ask for. And I really believe that the more that we are obedient to God, the more we're serving him the way that he's called us to serve him, the more we're going to ask for the things that he wants to give to us. I hope that makes sense. That's kind of a, a roundabout way of explaining that. But the idea is that the more we are obedient to God, the more we're going to ask for those things that he wants to give to us. So we continue on in verse 24. He says, whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. And so, um, again, here's another benefit of keeping the commandments of God or to obey God. And it says this, that God will abide within me and I will abide within God. Okay. Same with you. The more you are obedient to him, the more you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, the more you are showing his love his agape love, what's going to happen is you're going to experience the presence of God in a more profound way. And obedience to God actually builds a relationship, it deepens a relationship with the Lord. And ultimately, that's what God wants with you. He wants a deepened relationship with you. He wants to be known by you and he wants to know you better. He wants to uh, experience that fellowship with you. He wants you to know that deep, deep fellowship with him. And so obedience um, has a way of um, drawing us closer to him. As we love others, we actually experience, um, you know, an increased blessing of God. We, we experience his love as we are loving. It's amazing how that happens, that we experience his abiding presence in us. And finally, by the spirit whom he has given us. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what Jesus has promised to us. That the Spirit, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we come to faith in Him, we're born again, that His Spirit actually abides in us. Jesus promises this for you. Okay? And we can experience the presence of the Holy Spirit as we're obedient to God. 
And the Holy Spirit is one of those things that many Christians don't really get. They don't understand it. Um, they may understand things about the Holy Spirit. They may read the Bible and learn some things, some facts about the Holy Spirit, but they don't really have an experience with the abiding presence of the Spirit within them. And that's something that has to be developed. You have to know that the Spirit is present within you. You have to develop that relationship um, through the Holy Spirit. And, and again, that happens through being obedient to the Lord. And so how do we do that? And here's just kind of some practical ways that I've done it. Um, one is to read the Word every day, to be in the Word, because the Word is the Word of God that speaks to me. It's the Word of God that speaks to you. And this is unchanging, it's unfading, this is the Word of God, this is His instruction to you. But it's more than just reading the Word, it's actually um, spending time in prayer in the presence of God. And that is spending time in silence with no distractions, like praying to God, but also listening to God as well. And that is a spiritual discipline that I don't think many Christians really experience. Um, it's not something that we work at too much. But to sit in the, in the silence, in the presence of God, and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And um, do you know the voice of God? You know, do you, have you experienced the voice of God, that still small voice within you? And how that works for me a lot of the times is, is it's in my time of reading the Word, God will point something out to me that's convicting me or something that's leading me. But it also is just spending time in, in silence in, in, with my eyes closed, praying to God, listening to God. Just in silence, listening to hear His voice. And a lot of times what God will do is He'll put somebody on my heart. He'll put a picture of somebody's face that I need to call, I need to text, I need to visit. I need to give them a word of encouragement, a word of inspiration. Uh, I just need to be a blessing to them, show them love. And so we need to be keenly aware of the voice of the Holy Spirit, but then we also need to obey. And the more that we hear that voice, the more that we obey, the more that we, we become accustomed to that. And again, that obedience, listening and the obedience to God, that will deepen that relationship that we have with the Lord. And that, that will continue to... Uh, to come more naturally to us. It'll come, um, you know, that, that we can really know the voice of God. And obedience brings that about. And so I want to encourage you today, continue to, to be in the Word every day, but spend that time just um, listening for the voice of God. If God puts somebody on your heart, bless that person, you know? And there's so many different ways that you can do that. But be obedient to it. The more that you're obedient, that you're trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you're showing His love to others, God is going to bless you, okay? You're going to ask for things, you're going to ask for blessings from God to be able to enable you to serve Him. And the more that you serve Him, the more you're going to grow closer to Him, the more you're going to um, you know, deepen that relationship with Him, the more you're going to experience the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. It's like the snowball effect. And it, it just continues to grow within you. And so try that out. And I know that God will bless you richly. Um, God loves you. He, he cleanses you of all of your sin. Um, he, he blesses you richly in so many ways. And, and my prayer is that you will experience that blessing today. Uh, thanks again for watching the today's Wednesday's Word. And uh, have a great rest of your week. And we will see you back here next week.